Hi, today I'm gonna show you how I've made this arcane fan art in Blender. This video have more than 1 million views on my social medias, so I thought that it would be the perfect first YouTube video. So I will be breaking down every aspect about the render, from the animation, the environment and texturing setup of course. But I prefer to tell you that this is not really a friendly beginner video because it will take too much time to explain every step and every clicks. So hope you're ready, let's go. To start, I love Arcane and after the season 1, I just couldn't wait for the season 2. So I wanted to create my own in between season. And like everybody, I wanted to know what happened after that last scene in season 1. Like what happened after Jinx shot that fish bone. So I just thought about a simple walking scene, like she just go back home by dragging a destroyed fish bone, and with the camera following her with a wide angle. First I've just created a simple block out of my environment and placing a camera to have a rough idea of the shot. Then I need to find a Jinx 3D model that's convincing. You can find various of them online, but I find mine on Turbo Squad at around $10. Now that I have my model, I need the animation because that will help me a lot for having a better idea of the shot. I find the perfect one on Mixamo and I know that I will just have to make a few tweaks to the pose so it corresponds to my needs. And by using directly the rigging tool that they offer, I was able to export the model and the animation back to Blender as an FBX file. And it gives me a better idea of the motion now. Great! Then, in Blender, I've just duplicated the keyframes a couple of times so that the walk cycle can be a bit longer. After that, I've also put my hands in the graph editor. Woo, scary place. It's not that difficult when you know what you're doing. Actually, I've just moved some keyframes and corrected issues that I had with the default Mixamo animation. Still, in the graph editor, I also moved the pose so that it corresponds roughly with the one I had in mind. But I didn't take this step too precisely, because I need to add a fishbone first that will be parented to her. So, fishbone, right? I've been searching online and I couldn't find a good model that corresponded to the one in the show, but I did find one on Sketchfab that was very similar to the real one. And of course, I can't download it. But still, I was like, I really need this one. So I did something very special and actually I don't even know if I had the right to do that. So please don't put me in jail. So what I did is that I've put the full screen mode and removed the shadows on Sketchfab 3D display. Then I've just recorded my screen and spinning around the model at each angle. Maybe you're starting to know where I'm going with this. After that, I've dragged my video into Reality Capture and I've made a 3D scan of it. So, it's not perfect, there are some issues and some holes in the mesh, but it's okay. Because the scene is very dark and I can still correct some issues later in Blender. But for the holes, I didn't remove them because it helps thinking that Fishbone is broken after Jinx used it. So after I've generated the scan and imported it into Blender, I've adjusted the size and placed it correctly beside Jinx. Then of course, parent it to her. At this time, I can keep tweaking the animation and be more precise because all of the pieces are here now. Now it's time to adjust my camera. I was thinking about a very large angle like a focal length of 16 and the camera that follows Jinx with a low angle shot. Let's talk about Jinx's hair. How did I make the simulation? This is actually more simple than this look. I just used the wiggle add-on and it's also free on GitHub. I'm not gonna show you how to use this add-on because there is videos on YouTube that can show you that and it's pretty simple to use, so don't worry. The cloth simulation. For cloth simulation, I always use Marvelous Designer so I can show you the process. And if you don't have Marvelous Designer, it's okay because they offer a free month's trial. So let's go back to Blender. I exported my Jinx character with Fishbone as well because I also wanted to interact with the clothes. Then imported in Marvelous Designer with these settings. While I was creating this scene, the trailer of season 2 came out and I've been inspired by this shot for the clothes. So I also will not show you how I made this cloth in Marvelous Designer because it's pretty simple to make and you can find plenty of tutorials online about this. But if you want me to explain how I create cloth in other videos, please let me know in the comments. So now that I have my simulated cloth in Marvelous Designer, I export it back to Blender as an Alembic file. And look at this, it looks already so much cooler with cloth physics. 
Ok, after some render tests for the animation, let's create the environment. I just have to create more details with the help of my block out that I did first. So I wanted her to walk in a small and narrow corridor in the undercity. With Jinx's graph all over the place and a very dark and contrasted light. Just like if she were on her way back to her place. So I've created the environment with some modeling and also the help of asset packs so that it can be made quicker. It's okay if you don't create all assets yourself because in this case the environment is not the main thing of the scene. I always recommend to use your library with asset packs mixed with your own asset you've created because that will help you to create a more unique scene. Texturing can be complex but interesting and enjoyable at the same time. For most of the pipes and assets that I have in my scene, I just kept the default texturing and maybe just adjusting the base color with the color ramp so that I can turn it to a rusty metal. And for the other parts that I've created myself, I just used my smart materials that I have created in previous project. But this is basically just a material that have two textures mixed with each other and an ambient occlusion mask for the grunge to appear at corners and intersections between objects. For Jinx's graph, I have created a texture in Photoshop that I can tile. Then I have added a mix shader in my material using my texture as a mask. Then turn the roughness at one and tweak a little bit the emission with the color ramp so that it can give me this barely noticeable glow effect. And finally, I just had to copy pass this mix shader to other materials. For the lighting, I created some neons in the corridor so that we can see a little bit, but not too much. I've also added a rim light at the end of the corridor so that it can draw the silhouette of Jinx and it also makes the scene more easier to read. And that's all. That's the only lights I have in my scene. For most of the scenes, two or three lights is usually enough. You just have to find the right places, but you get easily used to it by practicing. Last step in Blender, adding some cool visual effects. Like flickering lights on Fishbone, giving the illusion that it's broken. Very simple, just had to create a mask for the eyes in Photoshop and create an emissive shader with a noise animated values. Now the lightning that appears around it. I did this with a skin modifier, two displace modifier and then a weld modifier. I will not act like I know exactly what I'm doing here. I've just followed this tutorial and used what I've learned to adapt it to my needs. Also for the lightning to appear and disappear randomly, I've just used the noise value between zero and whatever the value you want. Plug that to the alpha and the emission and it did work for me. The sparks. There is two types, the one that appears by fishbone being dragged on the ground and others that appears at two times because of the lightning hitting a metallic pipe. Both of them have been made with Blender particle system. So for those that appears on the ground, I just had to set my number of particles, set the frame start and end. In this case, it's my old timeline because I want it to appear on the shot. Adjusting my velocity to my liking and then bake the hole. For the other sparks that appears with the lightning effect, it's actually the same thing. But I just set my frame start and hand for only two frames so that it will spawn all the particles at the same time and it will simulate like a heat effect. So, it deserves his own part because this one was not easy to make. First, I know that I will need a ton of them and it will be also not so visible because of the motion blur. So I've created a very simple version of it and used the alpha texture to get fake details in the mesh. Also created a mask for the body to be emissive and animated it with the build-in function in the graph editor. Created different variants of it by changing the phase offset at each time. So basically it means that I can add all those variants in my particle system as a collection and so they don't have the exact same wings animation all at the same time which would be very weird. Then I use the bone brain tool so that I can tell my moth to follow an actor and don't collide with Jinx and the environment as well. I will give you some useful tutorials on the bone brain tool in the description so feel free to check it out if you want to know more about it. 
At this time, I've made a render test with a pretty low resolution and I have noticed that something looks weird when all the moths go through Jinx and not even the cloth is affected by the winds it should make. To fix this, I did go back to Marvelous Designer and I have added a wind effect only at the end of the animation. Now it's time to make a render at full resolution and let's see how it looks. So for the resolution, I've put it at full HD but with 120% of the quality. And for the format, I have chosen Open EXR because of the color grading I made after in DaVinci Resolve. Also, here's my sampling if you want to see. And the rendering time took me about all night or maybe a bit more. And now I can import it into DaVinci Resolve, which is the software I use for my color grading. If you don't have DaVinci Resolve, it's okay, you can get it for free. We just have some limited options, but usually it's enough. So I just have to drag my image sequence and start playing with the color grading. I will not show you all the process for my color grading because there is so many ways to do it and this is not a color grading video. But if you're interested about how I do it, let me know in the comments and I will make a special video for it. So that's it. That's how I've created the shot. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please do leave a comment down below if this is the kind of thing you want to see more of. Thanks again for watching and see you next time. Yes.